Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. This is Scott. Today I'm at a historic location. This used to be the Marcus Red Fox in Bloomfield Hills. It's now an Andiamo restaurant. It is where Jimmy Hoffa was last seen. The disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa stands as one of America's most baffling unsolved mysteries. From 1957 to 1971, Hoffa led the Teamsters, transforming into a near-mythic figure within the labor movement, adored by his union members and reviled by his enemies. Hoffa's life was a storm of controversy. His fierce feud with the Kennedys and the whispered connections to President Kennedy's assassination only deepen the intrigue surrounding his mysterious fate. Days before the disappearance, photographer Tony Spina from the Detroit Free Press photographed Hoffa at his lakefront home in Lake Orion, Michigan. A few days after those photos were taken, Hoffa left his lakefront home at 1 p.m. for that fateful meeting. This is what his home looks like today. A bit more disrepair than when those photos were taken 49 years ago. This is the road that leads up to his house. It is now completely dirt. It's a nice scenic rural road. But rumor has it that Hoffa petitioned the city to have this road paved. They turned him down. And out of a fit of frustration, he decided that he was going to pave it. And one night, he brought in a crew and paved this entire road. You can see portions of the paved road at the end and different portions. But the majority of the road, 49 years later, is in a bit of disrepair. Hoffa made one stop on the way to the restaurant. It was to this building in Pontiac, Michigan. A friend of his and another union associate owned Airport Limousine Services, which used to be located here in the 70s. His friend wasn't in. He was out to lunch, but Hoffa was documented speaking to a couple employees. At this point in his journey, Hoffa drove down Telegraph Road to the shopping complex where the Moccas Red Fox once stood. Though the complex has been modernized since the 70s, it still holds secrets. Today the restaurant is an Andiamo Italian restaurant. And here's a little secret. The owners of Andiamo have connections to the mob. I'll reveal more of this intriguing connection later in the video, so stay tuned. Here's a glimpse of what Marcus Red Fox looked like in the 70s, the very place where Jimmy Hoffa was last seen. Hoffa had a critical 2 o'clock meeting scheduled with two notorious figures, Tony Giacalone, a.k.a. Tony Jack from Detroit, and Tony Provenzano, a.k.a. Tony Pro from New Jersey. But neither of them showed up. This no-show adds another layer of mystery and suspicion into Hoffa's disappearance. Stay with me as we dig deeper into this intriguing and ominous meeting that never happened. Now let's step inside the restaurant, which has been completely modernized since 1975. Despite the updates, the layout remains the same. One thing that hasn't changed is the bar, still in its original location. According to those familiar with the restaurant, Jimmy Hoffa had a favorite spot at the bar. Although he didn't drink or smoke, Hoffa loved to socialize there. For meetings, he would move from a seat at the bar to a table by the fireplace. This is the exact location where Hoffa was last known to be inside Marcus Red Fox. Let's move to the front of the restaurant. Let's take a look back at the former Marcus Red Fox. And let's, let's trace his steps out the doorway to the parking lot. The last known steps of Jimmy Hoffa.
Hoffa left the restaurant and made a call from a payphone located in front of the hardware store, which was in the shopping complex just behind the restaurant. These are scenes from the 2019 movie, The Irishman, in which they had Jimmy Hoffa going from the Moccas Red Fox to a home here in Detroit. Here's what it looked like in 1975. And here's what the home looked like on the 49th anniversary when I was there the other day. The FBI believed this story so much that it went to the house and actually pulled up floorboards inside of the door by the front door. This is exactly what it looks like inside that house. They found blood. So someone may have been killed there, but DNA results said it wasn't Jimmy Hoffa. Tony Jackaloni, Tony Jack never went to the meeting with Hoffa and denied ever having a meeting with Hoffa that day. Tony had a rock solid alibi being at the Southfield Athletic Club that whole day. The Southfield Athletic Club was owned by Lenny Schultz, another former mobster from Detroit's Jewish Purple Gang days. Lenny had a home just around the corner from the Moccas Red Fox as shown on the map. Here's a photo of what the home looked like in the 70s. Here's a photo of what the inside of the home looked like in the 70s, a location that Hoffa could have been killed. Here is video of me driving by the home um, in 2024 on the 49th anniversary. I think this is probably more likely the location where Jimmy Hoffa was taken and murdered. The FBI has been digging up locations looking for Hoffa's body for years. They've looked in several places in Michigan. One place in Oakland County was owned by Jack Toko the father of the current owner of Andiamo. The FBI has also dug up driveways, sheds, pools, farms, and many other locations. The search for Hoffa continues. There's rumors that he was buried under a bridge in New Jersey, that they took him out in a barrel to New York, that he's buried under Giant Stadium, that he could be buried in Milwaukee. I don't think any of these are true. Another rumor is that he's in the foundation of the former Renaissance Center, which was being built in the early 70s. It is now the corporate headquarters of General Motors. This rumor was started by Tony Giacalone, Tony Jack himself, who used to tell people as he was crossing the street in front of the Renaissance Center, say good morning to Mr. Hoffa boys. I think it's misdirection, but there is a lot of cement inside of the Renaissance Center. I didn't see Hoffa when I visited on the anniversary. But wouldn't it be ironic if Hoffa's resting place was actually in General Motors World Headquarters, a company that he used to fight against while he was with the Teamsters. What makes the most sense is that Jimmy Hoffa's body was taken to Central Sanitation in Hamtramck, Michigan. As you can see here, it's a short drive from any home close to the Moccas Red Fox. And mysteriously, just moments before the FBI could get a search warrant to go into central sanitation, it was burnt to the ground by arson. Yeah. What stands in its place today is actually the Wayne County Detention Center in Hamtramck. So this is filmed to the date, the 49th anniversary 
of the disappearance, this is more likely where Hoffa, Hoffa's body was disposed of. After decades of speculation and investigation, will this case ever truly be solved? Probably not. The question lingers, will the FBI close this case on the 50th anniversary? Or will new leads emerge and reignite the search and more digs? If you want to see more videos like this, uncovering mysteries that kind of haunt us, let me know in the comments. As I end this journey, I leave you with a road from Jimmy Hoffa's house, a path that nearly a half century ago led to America's greatest enigmas. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave a comment.